Hello, everybody. Hi. I'll just wait for everyone else to come in to the meeting room. Uh, everyone's filling up now. This appeared to be a very, very busy one. So um, I'll just wait a few seconds for everyone to catch up. I do appear to be one minute early. Um, and I'll share my screen um, while I'm doing this. I do have to apologize for the kind of homemade nature of all of this. Um, we didn't really expect to be in this position. I'm sure everyone knows that. Um, and I will apologize in advance if at any point a dog or a child appears somewhere around here or you can hear them. They're all trying to be on their best behavior. So um, uh, hopefully that will be okay. And now you should all have a um, option to see a Q&A panel. Um, if you have any questions, stick them in there. So anytime you can stick a question in there, I might not always answer it, but uh, or answer it straight away. I'll try and get to it. Leslie Ann's in again, always first to say hello. Um, we, uh, yeah, so I'll try and get around to the questions at some point. Um, a lot of people raising hands here. I'm not actually sure what that will do for us. Um, if you want to chat, there's a chat window as well that you can see. And I think everybody can see everybody else's chat. I'm not sure. Um, and yet we've got a couple of questions in there already. Good. So um, the idea behind this, today's webinar, oh, before I move on, um, for those of you who haven't seen the other ones that we've done, I've now got a page on our website. Hopefully you can see this. I'm sharing my screen here. Hopefully you can see this. And this is our website. And if we scroll down the very bottom, um, there's a, uh, and under the resources, there's this webinars page. It looks horrific when we go in there. We're working on that, um, but it gets some information. So here's today's one, and there's a sign up form for that. And then we've got previous ones here. I'm going to put our other videos on YouTube, and there'll be links to those there. So if you want to see previous webinars we've done, even though I can imagine they're very cringy and horrific and horrible, but um, that's the way to do it. Go to our website, scroll all the way down the bottom to this blue bit where they've got the webinars link down here. Um, okay, so um, today's webinar is supposed to be on the tracking and monitoring side, but we did observations yesterday. So if you've got questions about how to create observations or stories, um, maybe come and uh, email me separately or get in touch with us separately and we will try and answer those because I want to try and focus on the um, tracking and monitoring side of it here. I've had a, a, a chat in there from Rahil who says, how do we get on the webinar? So hopefully you can all see this. I'm not sure. Are you able to, if, if you can see it, please let me know. Otherwise I'm talking to myself. Um, you should be able to see something in here. Let's see what's. Before I go on too further, I just want to check that you can all hear me. Oh, good, we can see you, said Carly. That's fine. Can you hear me, Carly? So that's the quick question. And you can hear, perfect. Right, okay, I'm going to carry on then. So, um, yeah, we want to concentrate on tracking and monitoring side of things. So let's imagine that we're all competent and competent at taking our observations and adding in our outcomes um, to those observations and, and rating the children on those. So where tracking and monitoring is very handy is for giving us uh, kind of a big picture about where a child or a group of children are in their learning. And the first place that I always come to look for this is uh, on the children tab here at the top, we've got this button here that says cohort tracking. So if I click into the cohort tracker, we'll see a page that asks us to select a couple of options. And um, the important thing to remember for uh, all this is that the quality, and this goes back to observations too, the quality of the information you get out from the system is only as good as the information that goes into it. And that's the same for observations. You know, if we, if we do high quality observations, we'll get high quality uh, profiles for all the children. So um, on our cohort tracking page here, we're asked to make a couple of selections. So I am going to choose from my available curricula. I'm going to choose the early level because this is the one that I always use in my demonstrations. But for customers in different parts of the country or different parts of the world, you can just choose whichever um, framework applies to you here. And uh, that's all I'm going to choose at the moment. You can filter if you want to by a specific child. 
or a class or a room. So if we only want to see a particular child or a particular staff member. Um, but I'm just going to um, do all of my children that are on the early level of the curriculum. And we generate this report here. Um, and what this gives us is a table that looks something like this. Now, also please bear in mind that this is a demonstration account. So these are all made up children and this, all this information has been added as I'm doing demonstrations. So it's probably not true to, to what, what, what you see in life, but um, it's still useful to give us some indication. So every time you're taking an observation, um, you're adding your experience and outcomes, your statements from the UIFS or from whatever framework it is, you're doing your traffic light, red, amber, green ratings, and that is building up a picture in the background every time you take an observation. If you never have to look at this page if you don't want to, and many of you maybe won't go as in depth as this, but this um, is here automatically. You don't have to do anything extra um, for that. So what we've got here are our curricular areas along the top, and this will vary depending on your framework. So we've got our health and well-being, numeracy and math, etc., which is in English. Um, we have got down the left-hand side. Uh, we have got our children. So here's all the children here, and then. In between that, in the main body of the uh, diagram, we've got the different ratings that have been attached for a child. So hopefully that's kind of self-explanatory. So we've got inner health and well-being under activity and health, for example. So they're split down into their different organizers. So we can see that Jennifer here is has been assessed as green. And that's purely because of the observations that have been taken for Jennifer. She's got more of those that are green than uh, are, are not. And then she's as green. These gray ones here um, are showing us that Jennifer's not had any observations or experience in that at all. So this is useful in a couple of ways. If we look down this, this graph here, what we can see, or this chart, we can see if we look perhaps at Malcolm, we can see that if we look along here, Malcolm has had a lot fewer observations than all of his friends and his peers. Now, it could be that Malcolm is just a new child and he's just joined us and he hasn't had a chance yet, or he's only in a few days a week, or whatever the reason is, it could be that Malcolm has actually been missed and he hasn't had as many observations, even though he's in the same amount of time. This screen gives you that information and then you can take that and make decisions. Um, so we could go to maybe Malcolm's key worker or we could investigate his profile further and just and see if see what's happening there. So that's really useful for the, for the coverage. Um, it's also useful if we look down the columns. Now, we don't have a great example here because as I say, this is just my demonstration account. But if we look down, for example, literacy in English and let's say the writing and organizing. If we look down this whole column, we can see that very few children have had observations under this part of the curriculum. Um, so this could be a gap. Now it might be that we've actually planned to do this later on in the year or whatever the reasons are, but it, it does highlight this to us and we can take a decision. So what we could do, you're actually able to click on um, these columns here. So if I click on that, um, we can see which statements or outcomes are linked to that part of the curriculum. So under our level writing and organizing, we've got this outcome within real and imagined situations like shared experience, et cetera. So what we could do, or our practitioners or lead practitioners or principals or teachers, what they could do is they could say, well, let's design an activity or um, something around this, um, uh, this statement that captures that. We can then um, create a, a an activity for the children and capture those in an observation and then we would have evidence that that child has experienced that part of the curriculum. So it's really useful um, for, for helping us with our coverage of different parts or different areas. The, this page here is, uh, is right up to date. So it's the 31st of March 2020 and um, what we can do is we can create a PDF of this. So I could use this button over here and create a PDF of that, save this, and I would have that there. But you can go back at any time to, to look at any date. And what that allows us to do is um, if we look at this um, drop down menu at the top here, we can choose a custom date. And I can say, well, what did this group of children look like? Now I'll have to go back a fair amount of time here. But let's say I want to go back to um, June 2017 generate that report there, and this gives us a snapshot of what these children looked like back then. And we can compare these two side by side, and we can see, well, there's our evidence that we've, been, we've covered more of the curriculum, that children have increased from reds to ambers to greens, etc. So it gives you that evidence because this is a snapshot of a certain period of time. 
hopefully that's quite self-explanatory. As I say, you'd never have to go and visit the screen if you don't want to, but there you go. Um, you can also, if you want to, so let's say that, uh, let's go back to today's date, sorry, let's go for all time, generate that report again. It's uh, maybe um, unrealistic to expect that you uh, will um, be able to capture an observation for a child for every single part of the curriculum. Uh, maybe you just want to use a professional judgment sometimes because you've been working with a child or you know where they are. So let's imagine Jennifer here under um, physical for health and well-being. We've got no evidence whatsoever. So we've not had any observations at all. And we might just never get the opportunity for that. So what we can do is we can click on this uh, grey box here and we can say we want to actually do a manual assessment for, uh, for Jennifer. Yeah, for Jennifer. And we can do that down here and we can click her manual rating and we can change her to amber for example if we want to and there we go so she's now changed to amber now this is maybe a level of admin or um you know time that you wouldn't want to spend doing this but it's available there to those of you who would like to do that so we can see there the jennifer's now gone gone to amber for this one here um yeah so you can manually assess children um even if they haven't had an observation. I'm just going to have a quick browse of here uh, to make sure I'm not missing out anything here. Um, so Carolina or Carolina asks, can we see this info in the pre-birth of three? Yep, you can. So any framework that you've got added, here we go. See, I've got pre-birth of three added in there. You can run the same report for that. So it looks a bit different because of a different, uh, different framework, but yeah, you certainly can. Um, and who is that? That's Melissa has asked in regards to tracking the save for later observations show here, or is it only published on? That is a good question, Melissa. The answer is it's only published observations. So if you've done lots and lots of saved observations, spent a lot of time doing them, they won't actually appear on this until they're published. Um, so it's just because you know you might have lots of saved observations that never make it to a published state, so we don't uh, we don't we don't count those. So it's just observations. Stories obviously don't count here either because stories aren't linked in any way to a framework. So it's only observation. Um, uh, so Mary's asked, um, so when we did Jennifer there to Amber, will Jennifer be Amber when we go to her observations? So yeah, well, so Mary, let me um, use that as a little springboard here. So um, if I click on these names here, we can see an individual child's tracker. So let's click on Jennifer and we'll get taken to her individual tracker. And this is the same page that you see if you'll go to Jennifer's page and then there's a button called learning tracker um, just beneath that. That's my little toolbar hiding my page there. I can't, there we go. So if I go to Jennifer's page here, down the left hand side, there's this learning tracker button. This takes us to that same page here, this one here. And what it shows, actually, I'm going to go on to um, my favourite little boy, Alistair, and use his one because we've we've actually filled a bit more out of that one. So if we go to Alistair's page and learning tracker, we'll get to see his individual tracker. Now over, you'll see a few columns here, and these are pie charts, or another sort of visual representation of um, of the data we saw in that big square one there. And uh, what we have is down the left hand side we've got what we call starting points. So when a child joins you, you may want to take that opportunity to do an assessment with them. And I know in different parts of the country, they've got different ways of doing it. So it could maybe baseline assessment is something you know it as. And I know not everybody does this, so this won't apply to everybody. But your starting point here, so the child, Alistair here started with us in, in February. Well, forget the year, because it's uh, been going on a while now. And what we can do is, this is a little button up here, the starting point button. We can come into the starting point and we can then make some, you might want to do this in, uh, alongside the parents. We can come down all the different areas of the curriculum and we can manually assess them here. So red, amber green, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this works as, again, the same for any framework you want. So, you know, if we went for our English customers, if we're in the EYFS, um, we've got our different areas, then we've got our age bands down here, and again, we just do red, amber, greens, whatever we want to do. So that's your starting point. You don't have to do that, but you can, but it, if you do fill that out, it's quite useful as a benchmark um, for all future learning that they do. 
So here's Alistair's uh, learning tracker again. So his starting points are all down the left-hand side. And what this is telling us is that in health and well-being, we're saying that he's completely 100% red. Now, as I mentioned yesterday, I think, red, amber, green is, is um, I guess that's a fluid, uh, there can be fluid descriptions of that. What does that mean is not really defined, or if it is, it's different depending on your local authority or your country or wherever you are. So what red, amber, green is, is could be personal to you guys. It's not shared with the parents. None of the screens I'm showing you today are visible to the parents. So they don't see any of this tracking and monitoring through their side. Um, if you want to share them, share that with them, then certainly you can, but um, it's, it's not, they, they wouldn't be able to see this. They wouldn't be able to access it. So what we've got here are our starting points in the left-hand column. And over on the far right, we've got today. So what we can see is from back in uh, February 2014, Alistair was completely red in health and well-being, but now he's progressed to where he's mostly green, and then we've got some amber and some red. These blank columns here, you can actually use these as arbitrary dates to um, see where he was at a certain point in time. So if I click on this plus button here, we can add in a snapshot date, and let's say we want to go um, to March 2018. I don't know what that would look like. There we go, 29th of March 2018. And there we go. So we can see a little bit of progress. So we've had a little bit more added in uh, for health and well-being, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we can add in another couple of dates. Let's just say we want to go to March 2019. Now we add that in there. And again, we see a little bit more progress there. So the idea is that you can use this screen to, um, to show progress over different periods of time. You can amend these dates anytime you want. So I can delete this date and it's not deleting anything. It's just removing that from the display there. Um, you can create a PDF and print this out if you wanted to as well. So that's possible as well. And alongside this, so this is our sort of overview. We can actually look at a very detailed view here. So if I click on detailed, we can go down now into the individual outcomes. And this relates way back to where, what Mary was asking, because when we manually amended a child, it would affect the screen as well. So we've got our curricular areas. I can use these little buttons to expand them all. And then I can expand again. So I can see the individual outcomes that have applied to this. So we can see here that Alistair is rated green currently. Uh, and we've had, uh, actually, sorry, here we go. So. The ones with a little star in it, they have been manually amended. So that's telling us that it's been manually amended here. The ones without a star, they have just been done through observation. So if you've got manually uh, amended or manually assessed, um, the way I did with Jennifer's and her amber one, um, that's here. So we can, we can see we can just do these on this drop down as well. And um, again, you can print all this out. You can save all this. You can use different dates to see the different things that are in here. So play around with the screen, spend a little bit of time with it just so you can get a bit familiar with it and how it works. These blue arrows will take us to the observations for this particular outcome. So um, it's just a handy way to see your evidence for that particular part. Um, we have got, I would actually maybe like to show you um, this page as well, if you haven't seen it, because we did a, we, up until a few months ago, um, the logic behind how this works was slightly different. Um, but I will explain how it works now. And in fact, we're going to go into your settings because there's uh, a little bit for you guys to do as well. Um, way down in our um, in our configuration page, way down at the bottom, we've got our tracking information. So uh, let's have a little look at the tracking keywords and colors because if you remember when we created our observations, by default, they're red, amber, green. Um, you can change the default wording and the default colors on this page here. So if you didn't want it to say red, amber, green, you can change that. So I've seen things like emerging, expected, exceeding, or developing, consolidating, secured, whatever you want, you can change that, that label here. Again, it's only internal, so it's only you guys that will see that. And these uh, colors can be changed as well. So these are what they call hex codes. Maybe need to make this a little bit more user friendly, but you can put different codes in here to get different colors. And if you just Google um, uh, color hex codes, uh, we can get an idea of what it looks of like. HTML color codes. So let's say I wanted that now to be uh, blue, for example. There's our um, code there, 759 TBC. So I can copy that, stick that in our um, 
fix that in our thing. Where's my page? Where does I put it? There it goes. Yeah, so I can put it in here and that will change that to a blue. So there we go. Um, yeah, so you can play around with that as well if you want to. But a really important page is this tracking formula page. So um, it goes in, I'll not, I'm not going to go through this whole page here, but it explains how the tracking system works. But the main part to think about is that a group is um, made up of individual statements. So what you don't want to happen, say you've got five statements in that group, you don't want, as soon as one statement has been marked as green, you don't want that whole group to be marked as green. And that's why we've introduced the concept of thresholds. And this is where you make your own choices here. So um, down the bottom, you've got where you can make your choices. So when we say an outcome will be considered red when 5% of its observations are marked as red, and you can play around with these here. So we've said basically a group wouldn't be green unless 70% of the observations are green. So hopefully that makes sense. You could maybe change that, these thresholds about as you want to. It will still, it's important to remember that there are still going to be outliers for this here. So there are things that maybe wouldn't make sense. Um, so you might just want to bear that in mind because the tracking system, as I say, is really just a sort of overview and a guide. Um, and we need to basically use our best judgment a lot of times. Um, so have a look at this page. It's all in your configuration tab and you can um, maybe check that out there. Um, I'm going to go back to the questions because I can see a few have piled in. Um, uh, Janice asked if these are the E's and O's it's tracking or is this the benchmarks? Um, Janice, it depends on what you've done to create your observation. So when you're creating an observation and you're adding in your frameworks or your outcomes, you can choose either the benchmarks or the E's and O's from the Critical for Excellence. Um, so it really depends on, on what, you, what you've done there. But yeah, the benchmarks are all in the system and you can add them in from your configuration tab and into this curricula tab here as well. Um, uh, Joanne has said, we don't seem to have traffic like colored boxes. We have boxes that say experience. So that is a good point because there are some frameworks for which there are no um, uh, ratings. So for example, well, let's, let's go back to, let's go back to my friend, make sure I've got this one activated. Um, but the one I can think of is the developmental milestones and learning. So this is one that was being created by Edinburgh Council, and you might have something similar to this in yours. So if I go back to my buddy Alistair, and we create an observation. Um, and I'll just do an example for you here. So what you'll see is when we're adding, we're on the earth level at the moment, and we can add in our E's and O's. I can add as many of these as I want, and they all have this red, amber, green up here. But if we go to a framework that I think you're talking about, Joanne, um, and that would be the developmental milestones, what we have here, we can add them in. So here's my different outcomes. We can add them in, but you'll see when I've added that in, we don't have red, amber, green. They're just experienced or not. And that is because for whatever reason, whoever supplied us with that information or that framework so in this case edinburgh council they didn't want a red amber green system they wanted to just say we've got evidence that they've experienced it or they've not experienced it so it's a bit more simple um not every framework works like that but some do so if you're if you ever get to this situation <clears throat> like this here where we've added an outcome and we don't have a, an option for red amber green it's just experienced or not experienced so obviously that means that you can't um see uh uh, an increase in ability um, over a period of time, you'll just see whether they've done something or whether they've not done something. So hopefully that makes sense, but I would, um, you can speak to us in further detail about it, but it, whoever has created that framework, whether it's a local authority or maybe it's yourself in, in the nursery or the school, that's the reason for that here. Um, and Sharon um, Casbia had the same, same question, so hopefully that, that answers that here. Um, uh, we've got Anonymous here has asked us, can we track progression pathways or just outcomes? So for those of you who do use the progression pathways, they are actually on the um, learning tracker, but they're way at the bottom. Um, let's have a look. 
Uh, and we're actually going to be doing a bit more work on progression pathways, that, that part of the system as well. Let's have a look here, our level. So we just have to scroll further down for that here. So if I scroll down, we can see our second part of our um, E's and O's. So there's our curricular areas. And then we've got our further down progression pathway. So the progression pathways are down here as well. It's a little bit different. Um, depending on what framework you're using um, there, you can uh, maybe have a look and see if that works for you. If not, let us know what it is that we need to do to make that work properly for you. Um, okay, and we've got, <laughs> Saba says, this is a good one. This is my first time using learning journals. How long is it gonna take me to know everything? Well, uh, God, I, I'm not sure how to answer that one. Um, I've been doing this now for eight years and I'm still finding, in fact, it's, customers are still pointing things out to me. So I, I don't know if that's good news or bad news, Sabah, but. Um, uh, Alexandra, you've got a, a, a question about um, an individual thing for your nursery. Yes, if you can contact us separately, we'll, we'll get that done for you. Um, Okay, right. Um, so what, another thing I want to ask, uh, sorry, to show you is our next steps, because we've just added a new next steps tracker in here as well. If we, um, back on our children tab, we've got this new button here, which a lot of you might not have seen because it's only just been added in the, in the last few weeks, but this will uh, give you a better overview of next steps for a particular child. So here's all our children. Again, we can select a specific room or, or key person if we want to, but it will show you how many active next steps you've got for each child and how many achieved ones. The way we try and work it in our nurses, we don't want to have too many next steps at once for an individual child. So I touched on this yesterday, but you know, from this chart, we can actually see that Abby here has got 26 active next steps. So when you see something like that, those next steps are never all, all gonna get followed up. Um, it's, it's a little bit pointless for us to have 26 on there because it's never going to happen. But what it also does is it shows us any child who doesn't have a current next step. So there's Liz here. She's not got anything she's currently working towards. So that highlights that as well. So this is a handy little page that we've just added that, um, that might be useful for you. Um, yeah, so it just, it just shows you that. And you can print this out if you want to as well. So we actually have a, a copy of this in our sort of staff room, um, I think. And uh, so, so staff can see which ones are, are active or not. Um, okay, so um, I'm going to go back to the questions here because they just keep they keep flying in. Uh, Janice asking about a record, recording of this video. Did I go into that? I think I did, yeah. So on our website, so it'll be available later this afternoon or maybe tomorrow morning. But on our website, if you come to learningjournals.co.uk at the top here, scroll all the way down the bottom, there's this page here that says webinars, which we're currently working on. It doesn't look very good. But if you go in here, upcoming and previous webinars will, will be detailed in here. So we've just got the very basics in here. So there's yesterday's one, which you can hopefully click on here, go to YouTube, and then that will that'll hopefully open that up. And I will, yeah, so that, that was a, a good 58 minutes there. I'm not gonna play that because my face is about to appear in there. Let's just close that down right now. Um, so that's where you would see that, Janice. Uh, another good question here, I'm not sure if this is Carla again, but how long do parents access this after leaving the school? Well, that actually depends on, on you guys. So a child's profile will be available to a parent as long as they're active. So if I come back to my children tab here, we can see all of our active children in a particular room. Um, so here's all our active children here from our preschool room. And as long as they're active in this room, then the parent will be able to access them. But at some point, you need to kind of tidy things up for yourself, so not have all these old children on here. So what, what we would suggest you do is you say to a parent at the end of the year, um, this, is, this will be available until, I don't know, beginning of September, whatever it would be, and after that, we'll deactivate your child's profile. And what the parent should do, and you can direct them to do this, they can come to their child's profile and click on this, convert the profile to a PDF button. So when they do this, they can export everything that's been, that's been added to their profile. They can 
um, <clears throat> excuse me, they can um, download all the pictures, all the videos that have been uploaded, uh, all the observations, all the stories, all the parent contributions. They can save everything so they'll have it. So it's not like this is something that's going to go away for them and they won't have, have it. Um, they can keep all that and they can save it and download it. You shouldn't really need to print anything for anybody anymore. That was kind of one of the points of this was that you don't have to print anymore, but if you want to, you certainly can. The, um, so once the parents have uh, downloaded everything and you're ready for the child to be deactivated, you can either go into their profile, edit them and deactivate them, or you can use this list button over here, which I was going to talk about in our sort of admin tips and tricks later on in the week. The list button just gives you a list of all the children. And here we can say, though, let's imagine that Abby has left us now. We can deactivate her profile by checking that box there. Now, that doesn't delete Abby's data. It's always, it's still there, but it's not been deleted. What has happened to it is it's, it's gone into what we call our archive. So up the top here, we've got this gray button. And if I click on archive, uh, we can see all of our archive children. So here's all the children that have left the nursery or moved on or gone somewhere else. What we can do here is we can reactivate them by check, checking this active box, or we can delete them from here. If we delete them from here, you get one last chance that says this will permanently delete this child and all associated data and it cannot be undone. So it will be deleted for good there. If you delete them, we can't recover it. Um, so please bear that in mind. Uh, only delete something you're really sure about deleting. You might have noticed this yellow message that's been popping up for the last few weeks. So um, we have taken the decision because a lot of people turned out they weren't deleting things from their archive. Um, and you should only hold on to data as long as you need it. Um, we've taken the decision that uh, a year is long enough for you guys to have that active in your account. You can export that and you can save that forever if you want to. But we've taken the decision that one year is going to be long enough for a child to be um, archived. So from July this year, 2020, um, any archived children over a year will be deleted. So you'll be notified of that. So nothing's going to get wiped out automatically. Um, uh, that's why we've added sort of this days archived screen here. So, you know, come, uh, come July, this test child that we've got here, that would, that would be removed. Because there's no reason for you to hold on to say uh, Martha's information for year and a half, two years nearly. So, um, okay, uh, I was actually going to go into that on Thursday as well, but let's, uh, let's carry on. Um, some of these are maybe a little bit more technical, and I can go into. And Kirsty, I would I would count yours one here as well. Um, but I will I'll answer, I've got all your answers here, uh, the questions here, so I'll, I'll respond to that one. But Carla again says, um, do they have to be green for going to school? Um, no, there's no, there's no, uh, I guess there's no rule on that. So if Carla, you're in Scotland and you're talking about the air level, I think the general thinking is that a child would not be expected to be green or mostly green until the end of primary one. Um, because that's when there's that transition between the first level, the air level and the first level. So, it's un I think it's unrealistic to expect that you'll have all that evidence to make a child green and all those things. And what the tracking that we're trying to give here is really just a picture or uh, a broad view um, of where there may be issues or where there may be coverage that has been completely missed out. So I don't think I think it's important that you don't spend a lot of your time trying to make sure that every box is checked green um, for all these children before they moved on. Um, because I just don't think that's feasible, but you don't have the time certainly to do all that as well. Hopefully that answers that one. Um, yes, so everything I've, sh well, so everything that we've showed here, uh, this is a good one here from someone, I'm logged in as a manager. So a manager has, an, has access to every single screen that we have. So all staff have access to, um, our cohort tracking, our individual child's tracker, all the buttons that we're seeing on here are available to all staff. What they don't have access to is the configuration tab and the parents tab and the staff tab. So I'll go into this in a bit more detail um, on the admin one whenever we get to that. Um, but yeah, so if you're a key person and you're thinking, well, I don't have access to all these buttons at the top, it's just because of your user level. So if they're 
features or functions that you think you need access to, speak to your um, manager or the head teacher or whoever would be able to give you access to that and they can maybe review and see if that's something that you need. Um, it's just, uh, there's some things that we don't allow key people to do, um, but it's available to everybody if, if they're granted access. Um, so Alexandra again is asking, do schools use learning journals to show progression for children? Um, nursery to be one. Yeah, well, we've got a lot of customers now um, in primary schools, so a lot of our um, a lot of our profiles are used all the way up to primary seven. I'm not sure what the equivalent is in different areas, but yeah, so uh, all the way from nursery all the way up to the end of primary school, we have the ability of that. And for I'm, I'm not going to go into this at all, really, but for um, the older children, they're actually able to log in with their own details and create their own observations and their own, um, uh, their own observations and stories, and they can then be added to their profile. So if that is something that people want to talk about, let me know because I can go into more detail on that. We had some great help from some schools who, I'm thinking of specifically Christorpen Primary School and James Gillespie's in Edinburgh here, who did a lot of work with us last year to get us um, up and running with child logins and it's a great system that I think they've they found very beneficial especially over these last few weeks so um, if anyone wants to know more about how older children can access it or how older levels of primary schools can access the system then get in touch with us and we'll certainly um, show you that maybe better doing a one-to-one -one demonstration for that sort of thing but yeah children can log in they can create their own observations and it's done really well for home learning over these last couple of weeks um, if a child moves to a school who uses learning journals, can the profile be transferred over? Uh, Katie, yes, it can. I'm actually going to go into the transfers and things at the admin side of it. But yeah, if a child has, I'll, I'll show you how to do that then. But if a child has a profile with you, they move to another school who also use learning journals, then we can transfer everything over. Well, you guys can do it actually. Transfer everything over. So for the parent, it's one consistent experience all the way from nursery up to the end of primary school. They will have that one big long um, uh, record of everything they've done in their learning. Um, Susan, Susan, I'm afraid I'm not sure what you're asking there. How do you get different logins? We currently have one. Well, I'll assume that you're talking about staff logins. So if you're the manager, I'll just quickly touch on this. It's not really tracking the monitoring, but if you're the manager, you go to your staff tab and you can add a new member of staff and then you just choose choose their role. So it's either nursery manager, key person, or whatever whatever you've got there. And then it's first name, last name, email address, and that will send you all the details to that person of, of who's at it. Um, Leslie Ann, first in the room every day. Why do you not have all these facilities when using the app on the iPad? So for those of you who have used our iPad app, you'll know that all you can do on that is create observations or stories. And the reason for that is, um, and it's probably a mistake on our part, because we prioritize being able to work offline rather than all these extra features. And that has unfortunately meant that there's a lot of areas of the app that you cannot, a lot of features of the website that aren't on the app. Um, the app is very, very difficult to, to develop. And we actually still do see issues of it. Some of you might still find that you've got issues there. But we actually recommend that if possible, use the website version because that's the one that we're able to keep up to date really, really quickly. Um, the app is not going to get a lot of these features. They're just never going to be there. So we won't, I don't think we'll ever show things like the tracking and monitoring on the app. It was really purely to be able to give you the opportunity to take observations offline or stories offline. Um, so that's the reason for that one, Leslie Ann. Um, Katie has asked, can children, nursery children, do their own observations too? Um, they, I mean, technically they could, but I, I, so the problem with that, Katie, is that for the primary school children, they, they are managing their own logins. And I think that's not really something that the child's possible or to do, it's not possible for a child to do or to manage responsibly until the sort of older levels of primary school. So maybe primary four, maybe, but five, six, seven. So they have to, um, there's a login process for them. It's not as complicated as it, as it is for the staff members, but there's still a login process there. 
um, and also they've got to have access to all the equipment and the and, and stuff like that. So um, you could certainly try it, but it's um, it's probably not going to be something that many nurseries will will look into too too much. So, um, and Janice, Janice is, is using uh, learning journals for their secondary pupils too, in additional support needs school. Is there any scope to add the names of the outcomes for the nationals? Um, yeah, I think we could, Janice, if you again contact us separately and let us know what, is, what it is you need there, we can customise content. Um, I can't remember if I actually mentioned that, but for the frameworks that we've got in our configuration tab, and under the curricula section, if you um, if you have a look through it, and if, if the framework that you you're looking for isn't there, or if there is a framework there that you think almost works for you but not quite, let us know because we can do bespoke frameworks or custom frameworks for you. So let us know what it is you need, and within reason we'll be able to do that. There are some limitations of of the sort of way the system is set up, but yeah, let us know if there's something that you need specifically for that there. Um, Flora's asking if earlier children access their online journals to view only independently. Well, you, there is a pot, yeah, that's a good one. So, Flora, what they can do is see if we click on your face up the top corner here. We've got a few options, and we've got one called switch, uh, sorry, change to child view. You, you won't have all of these. This is a spoiler here, people journals. I'm not going to go into that just now, but keep your eye out for that in the next month or so. Um, but change to child view is the one we're looking for here. So if we click on that, you need to enter your PIN number. And um, what this does is it removes any editing, oh, any editing capabilities. So I did it wrong again. I oh, know I did it. There we go. So you can see I'm still logged in as our nursery manager, Marion. But now all I can do is access my child's profiles. So I can go into our uh, children here, I can see them all and I can click on a child profile, but I can't make any edits or add any observations or do anything. And this works really well if you happen to have a smart board or something like that, um, you can have all the children's profiles up on that smart board and then they can come along and they can click on the um, click on their picture there and they can look at all their observations. So that's child view that's available to everybody. You just have to click on your face up here and you can change back to staff view just by uh, popping your PIN number in again and clicking on submit there. And I think that's us back. Yep, there we go. So that's child view. Um, is there a way to see what active next steps are directly, are directly rather than searching through individual profiles? Uh, Pauline, that is, who's asked that question. So I think Pauline, hopefully, I don't know if you can hear the dog in the background there. I'll try and keep him quiet. <laughs> um, so yeah, Pauline, we've got our active next steps here, but you want to know the actual, maybe you're wanting to look for the actual um, content of those next steps. That's perhaps what you want to see. But if we go to, click on, they just clicked on Charlie's name here. This is going to bring up his profile and we can then go and see which next steps Charlie's working on. But actually what I think, and just it's just come to me there, Pauline, which would be a good way to do it. If we could have a little button here to expand what Jennifer's next steps are. So we know that she's got two, but it would be great if we could just expand this here. So underneath there'd be a new line that appears and we could see the two next steps that Jennifer's working on. So if I go to Charlie's, I can go to his next steps tracker down the left hand side. And that will show me the next steps that Charlie's working on. So we can see that he's got doing a group next step. Blah, blah, blah. So I mean, I've got all tests here. So here's all Charlie's next steps that he's currently working on. But yeah, I would be, I can see that we could have a, a nice way to do that on here. So I'll get that added to our development queue and that'll be something that we can do there. Uh, Carla here is asking, what if the children go in and change all their traffic lights to green? Um, well, the children can't do that. Uh, so the children, when a child logs in, they don't have any access to those areas of the system. Um, the only way they would be able to do that is if they somehow stole your iPad while you were logged in and then knew how to go and do it. But um, it's not something I don't think you have to worry about. Uh, so when a child creates their own observations, they're really just putting in a description and a picture, and then you can go and add in outcomes at the end of that. So children can't um, affect the traffic, the tra tracking and monitoring in, in any way at all. Um, 
would support Carly again, would support workers ever need to use this site. So there is a um, there is a user role called um, I forgot what it's called now. Nursery, I think it's next external support. So the idea for that was um, you may have maybe speech therapy or someone who comes in and works only with individual children. So when we add um, a new member of staff here, because those people won't need access to all the children in the nursery, they only have a, a couple of children they're working with. So yeah, we've got this external support here. And what happens with these guys, they would be set up the same way, but they only have, you just grant them access to individual children. So if I knew that my support worker was only working with um, Alistair, I could grant them access just to that particular child. So yeah, so that's how you would do that one there. Um, Jill's asking about the daily diaries. Uh, I don't really want to go too much into this one, Jill, because it's not really related to tracking and monitoring, but these are if you have babies. So it would be, uh, it's, a, it's a way to allow you to um, record things like nappy changes or sleeps or the food or, or drink that they've had. And um, we can add that onto your account if you don't have it, just give us an email and we'll add it, add it to you and you can play around with that. Um, okay guys, if that is, I think we're getting through most of the questions there. So um, I'm gonna try and cut us off now um, and try and keep this one at a reasonable time. Hopefully you'll join us during the week. We've got, I know we've got a, just a general Q&A one. So a lot of these questions would fit into that. We've got our admin one as well and something, I've totally forgotten what it is, but um, please do sign up to them. It seems to be more and more people coming every day. I think we had 200 and something people here at one point. I don't know how many we've got now. Um, one that, oh, a lot of people have gone, but anyway, if anyone is due an invoice or getting billing out and you're gonna struggle because you're closed and you have no children, contact us because we can help you with that. Um, I would hate to see someone um, throw away all the work that they've done um, because they're worried about um, billing or invoicing or anything like that. So please do come to us. And we'd want to be able to help you with, with those sort of things. So um, hopefully I'll see most of you again tomorrow or a lot of you again tomorrow. Um, anything, you can always contact us. I'll do this bit again. So go to our website and at the very top, we've got our phone number. You can always eat, contact us um, through our contact form over on the right hand side here. And we've got our live chat thing down the right hand side too. So you can always send a message in and we'll usually get back to you within a few minutes um, for that one there. So thanks very much for coming along. Um, hope to see you all again tomorrow or later on in the week. Great. Thanks very much, everybody. Bye-bye.